Welcome to Field Sports Britain, coming to you this week from the site of the CLA Game Fair. Next week it's going to be bigger, better and taller than last year. That over there is the GunsOnPegs.com stand, a double-decker monster. But uh, this one over here is the one you really want. Blenheim Palace. Coming up in this week's programme, we have got, well, do you have trouble with unsightly rats and rabbits? Sporting shooter editor Dominic Holtum is wiping them out with an air rifle. The fastest clay pigeon trap in the world. We try it out on cans of Coca-Cola. Some say he bathes in the milk of vixens. We only know foxes have a lot to fear from the legendary Roy Lupton. But first, in our launch programme back in August 2009, we went rabbiting in Essex with a cheetah, Bumani. We learned to our cost that he wouldn't harm a fly, let alone a rabbit. So when we heard that keepers at his home, Eagle Heights in Kent, had been attacked, we went to investigate. It appears to be business as usual at Eagle Heights. The falcons and eagles are still on display, so is one of the slowest members of the animal kingdom. And of course, there are three of the fastest. Savannah, Zena, and our friend, Bumani. We hit the headlines when we took him hunting in Essex. Eagle Heights is in the papers again after the young female Zena attacked a couple of keepers. Alan Ames puts it down to hormones. So you can't beat a good bit of little bit of drama, bit of blood, you know, and a bit of TV exposure, can you? You know, I mean, you can make what you want of it. You can either view it uh, for what it was, which was a bit of an incident, you know, bit of a scuffle, bit of blood, overzealous hormonal teenage cheater. You know, everybody got out, everybody fa followed their SOPs, their standard operational procedures, did exactly what they should do, remained calm, and uh, got out. Index. You know, uh, now and, and you know, and, and to s put it in, in perspective, if this was a tiger, nobody would have gone in there ever. Yeah, because if a tiger gets a bit feisty, you're dead. Luke was one of the keepers who was on the receiving end. He helped rear Zena, and he doesn't know what all the fuss is about. I mean, she's only she's a year and a half old, so she's still a cub, and she's still quite playful. So, but sometimes she she takes it a bit too far. That's all it was really. It's not this mauling that everyone's been talking about or uh, ripping my leg off. I've had all sorts of things. Lucky to escape with my life. <laughs> no, none of that's really true. The papers didn't help matters, suggesting Zena was hit in the face with a fire extinguisher and they had to sit on her to contain her. Quite what a cheetah would do if you hit her in the face with a fire extinguisher, I'm not sure. but um, No, no, definitely not. That or us sitting on her head. I, I said to someone the other day that... If we sat on her head, all she'd do is have a nice mouthful of prime human rump. I've had worse dog bites before than what I've had off the cheetah. I mean, I've got a little thing, they didn't even stitch any of it um, uh, on antibiotics, but that's what you would expect. For years, Alan's been frustrated with the red tape involved with keeping these cats. He just wants to give visitors the show he feels he can deliver. He introduced the zip wire run to illustrate just how fast these creatures are. This was banned in April. So now the keepers go into the cheetah enclosure and play with them and educate the public about these cats. It would be impossible with a tiger or a lion and Alan wants people to understand that these animals are about speed, not power. Yeah, and another thing about the cheetahs that makes them not, not particularly dangerous is the fact that they've got feet like a dog. Um, these feet are specifically designed for running and tripping and not for uh, holding, like you know, the, the lion with, and the leopard and the tiger, it's got retractable claws, so they are needle sharp, and they, so when they're when they're running, they're in, and when they catch, they're like that, and they latch in and hold on. This, you know, it, it, it can scratch you about as much as a dog could, so they're great. And the bite, the bite on a cheetah, is actually only about thirty percent greater than that of a human, because I mean, it's a very lightly built animal and the, the head's small and what it's designed for is suffocating things like uh, a little Thompson's gazelle which doesn't really take a great deal of effort so you know, there's a there's a, an offset between power speed and being light because it has to be light to be fast Zena come here Bobby hello you can hear her purring if you if you know she purrs away hello hello baby and she's absolutely beautiful the attack won't have done anything to help Alan's fight with the council. But there's no such thing as bad publicity. 
Eagle Heights has never been busier. They squeak him here, they squeak him there, the bride of Camo squeaks him everywhere. And that's the blooming problem. Roy is once again trying to bring in a fox to within shotgun range. It keeps him on his toes and arse as you can't be looking everywhere at once, but you have to position yourself as best you can. Ian is also along for the ride, so two cameras and a shotgun are lying in wait. The first setup shows promise. Bird alerts and a rustle in the hedgerow, but we've been spotted. The magpies were coming in and really starting to kick up. And I'm not sure if the fox had just come through this scrub, coming in a bit close to us and made us, but something came in through the scrub there and disappeared off out. So I don't know, I'm not quite sure if, if one came in or not, but the magpies were about 10 yards away from us there. The second delivers a fox, but only when Roy is giving us a bit of chat. Ian spots it, but it takes off. Location three, a patch of woodland with some good bramble cover, perfect for daytime fox calling. This time nothing, but Roy's advice is to keep moving. It's very much like fishing, you've just got to try as many places as you can. And just because you didn't get one this time, doesn't mean that next time there won't be one or two coming through, so you've just got to keep trying. After that last one, I'm just keeping an eye out, making sure that another one doesn't just sneak out before we finish. Location four. This is another spot where Roy knows there's a fox about. Trying to cover 360 degrees, we try again whilst coming up with some sort of strategy to tell our wingman whether Charlie is coming in. Again, Ian strikes lucky and he wishes he had a shotgun instead of a camera. And Roy is starting to crumble. Oh no, no! Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Ah. <sighs> Don't you love days like this? So, second fox that's come in this evening, and again, he's come in behind us. There's a, a little drain that runs up the edge of this field here, and he's come, he's worked his, up, worked his way up through the drain, through the fence, and come up to 15 yards behind us. Made us, unfortunately, just before I could get the gun round on him, and I just saw him tailing off down the, uh, the track in the crop there. So, uh, trying to pack up. No, we shall, uh, we'll carry on and see how we do. Location 5, and Ian has swapped the camera for the gun. The last time we were here, we had the advantage of knowing we'd been outfoxed. The orchards were deep in snow, and footprints told the full story. Three more attempts produce nothing. As night falls, we bring out the lamp just to prove that there are still foxes out there. And, oh yes, there are. But these are on an estate where they're no longer shooting in an attempt to increase diversity. Oh dear. All these foxes will be enjoying dining out on all that diversity. Roy heads to his ground and Ian makes an impression on the rabbits. Then Finally, we find our only clear chance of the night, and Roy does the job. Ah, excellent, okay. So we've got a young dog fox there, obviously uh, this year's cub. Um, he was just out, uh, out mousing. We've already had um, three uh, cubs out of this, uh, this particular farm, and it's quite important that we get these ones here because uh, the farmer um, and the, the, the uh, the landowner that uh, that runs it here they're trying to uh, encourage grey partridges um, back on the ground so they've got beetle banks etc um, trying to encourage the partridges back so obviously if there's any uh, significant population of foxes on here any ground nesting birds won't stand a chance so we've got to be uh, quite efficient on this bit of ground and make sure that we take all the foxes off a frustrating day but dedication is what you need you want fast clays we have the technology Ah, oh, the can of Coca-Cola, an icon of the free world, as American as the Oval Office. So what shall we knock it down with today? A British clay pigeon trap. Well done, then. And not just any British clay pigeon trap. This one comes from the workshop of one of those very British inventors like James Dyson, Heath Robinson and Professor Caractacus Potts. Meet Ferris Widborne. Ferris is a Hampshire farmer who has much more fun inventing things. And this 
Five years in the making is the flurry launcher. Well, it's a clay pigeon trap. It um, doesn't look like one. Well, it's different because uh, the, there are limitations to the normal clay pigeon traps, mostly their range, uh, but also the speed of fire and most can't be altered or handled easily so uh, originally was trying to produce a better sort of shotgun target originally i started thinking well how can one make a clay go further having said that i started before with a heavy projectile which i could get to go a long way and i realized the limitation was that it potentially could kill somebody so we stopped at that point but i realized that if i could get clays to go somewhere near as far as i could get that it would improve driven shooting why has nobody come up with a system which looks as simple as this before? Uh, I think they probably have. Uh, there are uh, uh, pre prior art to it, um, uh, certainly in America, but in all occasions they tried to uh, release the clay with a solenoid. And no, uh, everything that I've seen was far too heavy to be manually carried. But also, because it's on a vertical axis, it was throwing clays out almost in any direction. Whereas this has a very definite, if I can show you, uh, a very definite catch at which point it is definitely released. And it is remarkable how accurate it has seemed, as we've seen with the Coca-Cola can. <laughs> have, a, have a look at the, uh, at the evidence. What's it gone and done to this? Well, it certainly burst this one. You can, you can actually see where the serrations of the clay have cut the can here. But it certainly burst it. But I, I suspect a, probably a, a weaker clay trap would do the same. But this is a, quite a fun experiment. But quite difficult to get the ordinary clay trap quite so accurate as you can do this. Because of course you can direct it as it's being operated. Any other clay trap one has to either uh, move it around or adjust where the clay is put onto the arm. With this one you just see where it went and put one to the left or to the right. Very easy. And there's quite a lot of serrations there, as you, you can see. The, the, that clay is, is it spinning faster than an ordinary clay? Uh, yes, I think so. Because the clay is in fact going faster than any other clay traps, and it's going down the same sort of rubber strip, yes, it will be doing more RPM. And there's, it, if you hit a tree with it, it nearly cuts a tree branch off. I'm, I'm talking about a small branch, obviously. But it's, uh, so yes. it's, got, it's got forestry commission uses as well, then? No, well, I think possibly. <laughs> <laughs> We have a couple of shooters to give it a go. Ferris has soon fired it up and has it throwing clays at a great rate. I think it worked very well. It's exciting. It adds a new dimension to clay pigeon shooting. I think uh, very exciting. Isn't it just the same as having a, you know, a lot of traps up on the top of the hill? Yes. So it basically does that. So it's lots of traps rolled into one. Rolled into one in actual fact, but producing a far faster bird in actual fact. Clay going over the top, it makes it uh, really quite uh, challenging. You were looking very gymnastic as you were shooting, I thought. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say. <laughs> I, I felt you. a bit slow in actual fact, pulling through them at times. Does, does it make you have to, does it put you on your toes a bit more? Yes, it does. certainly puts you on your toes a bit more than it did before, yes, yeah. with the normal clay. Chris, um, you're, you're a less experienced shot. Is it, is it intimidating? I, it's not intimidating, no. It's great. I mean, it's, it's a challenge, definitely a challenge with the kind of arc of fire and the speed that they're, they're getting released at. But no, it's good. It's really good. And you're hitting them, so... Oh, well, a few. <laughs> Versatility is the flurry launcher's stock in trade. Here's how Ferris makes the clays even more exciting. If you want to find out more, visit www.flurrylauncher.com. Planning a bit of a shopping spree at the CLA Game Fair this year? Well, here's an air rifle to look at. Dominic Holton of Sporting Shooter magazine gives us his review. So most of us started our shooting education with something similar to this. It's an old BSA uh, air rifle, um, which uh, David the cameraman stole from his father-in-law. Um, I started on something very similar when I was a young lad of about 10 or 11 years old, shooting paper targets in the garden. They still do a great job for most people, for youngsters who want to get involved in shooting. You can learn all the essential skills, uh, be it gun safety, handling, accuracy, and most importantly, field craft all the types of skills that are going to be applicable as you progress through your shooting life. So we're going to have a go with this and, uh, and see how it cuts the mustard and then we're going to have a look at something which is a, a little bit more up to date. Okay so we can see it's, it's pretty accurate you know it's going to roughly put the, the shot in the right spot but is something like this an old gun like this still suitable for hunting? Let's find out. And see our, uh, our rabbit has a entry and an exit wound um, so certainly at very very close range you've got something which is 
potentially killing. But of course, we're operating here at you know just a few yards. To be realistic, you need a weapon that's going to be able to kill at 20 to 30 yards. Um, otherwise, you're going to be putting such a uh, a demand on your field craft to get really, really close to the to the animal. So, then we're going to try a few more shots at, at slightly longer ranges with the. Uh, the Springer and then we're going to move on to uh, something a bit more modern and, uh, and see how that goes. Even if I can hold steady, which with these travel sticks I can, I don't really know how accurate this gun's been at this range and this I would say you know, is, is a kind of bare minimum to be wanting to produce a fatal shot in the field. Um, so even at the minimum killing range we've kind of reached the limits of what's possible with an old-fashioned air rifle with, uh, with iron sights. I'm sure there's people that are kind of more skillful and more dedicated than me with this kind of weapon that can do uh, can do better, but I wouldn't want to be taking this hunting. I think that's, that's the bottom line. So uh, I think it's time to move on to something a little bit more potent and see what 21st century air gunning is all about. So Sporting Shooter actually shares an office with uh, a couple of the top air gun magazines, Air Gun World and Air Gunner. Um, so I thought it'd be prudent to ask the advice of, uh, of the experts on those magazines and and see what they would recommend as a top modern hunting air rifle. Um, so I chatted through and said, you know, I wanted to compare an old fashioned air rifle with a new one and, and what would they recommend? And I can honestly say that when this particular piece of kit turned up, I was really surprised. This is the Air Arms S410F. Um, bit of a mouthful. What it is, is a very, very smart ultra carbine, pre-charged pneumatic, multi-shot repeating hunting rifle, um, bolt action, 10 shot magazine, floating barrel, telescopic sight, it has got everything that my uh, 3,000 pound centre fire hunting rifle's got, um, really really smart ambidextrous stock, the bolt's available in left hand or right hand so it's suitable for cack handers such as myself, um, and apparently this is the state of the art, and we're going to give it a go and see how it shapes up to that old BSA. Okay, so we're back in position where we were last with the uh, with the old BSA, or about 20 yards from the target. Um, just going to put a few shots through and uh, and see where we're where we're at. Um, we've loaded the magazine. All I now have to do is cycle the bolt. That will then uh, it's kind of a rotary style magazine, so it will keep keep loading as I go along. Um, we uh, we have a certain amount of charge. This is the air cylinder here, and it holds enough charge for I think about 60. 60 shots at 12 foot pounds, which is the legal limit. Um, you can see underneath there is a uh, there's a gauge that tells you the pressure of the cylinder. Um, you know, I've, I've shot this for a couple of days and had a bit of a play with it, and uh, I've only used half a charge. It was up at just under 200 bar. It's now down to 100 bar. Um, to uh, to charge it up, you just unscrew the fore end. There's an adapter there. If you've got a dive bottle, um, that's the way to do it. Uh, I've just got a hand pump which I nicked out of the office, I mean borrowed out of the office fill, I borrowed it. Um, it's quite physical to use but it pumps it up in no time at all uh, and once it is loaded and charged you're ready to go hunting, you know, if you, you know, 60 shots if you're out hunting that could be three or four trips, no problem at all. Um, so it's not the kind of thing you have to do every day. So let's give it a go, see how we get on. Okay, so we've just put a few quick shots through there and uh, the old orange rabbit has taken a bit of a pounding to be honest. Um, shooting impressions, really easy to use. Uh, the bolt's nice and slick, you need to give it quite a firm pull uh, to cycle it through, um, which is a bit different to a centre fire, which is a smoother action. Um, but the, uh, the rotary magazine works very, very well. Uh, it's got a safety catch here, you can see, slide through safety catch on the trigger. Um, which is a nice touch, something that obviously the, the BSA didn't have. Um, the trigger itself is a two-stage trigger. You can take up the first stage and then you're on your, your shooting position, uh, which is great for when you're hunting because you can take up the slack, hold and then when you're happy with your point of aim, release it. Um, the telescopic sight allows us to zoom right in. You can see your point of impact on the target. Um, really really keen to take this out hunting now uh, even if you just wanted something for, for target shooting in the garden or for introducing people to shooting 
there's no recoil with this. You can get a silencer as an option for it as well, which apparently makes it very, very quiet. Uh, but it's just really nice, really sweet to shoot. So yeah, watch out the local rabbit population. I'm coming to get you. We're going to be back, not next week, but we hope, stress on Saturday when we're going to do our first ever live show here from the CLA Game Fair. And that's not all. Look out for our big screen, gigantic daylight number blasting out our programmes across the site. We'll be giving away the prize for the best dog story in our trans canine dog box competition. This has been Field Sports Britain. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, which is about there, just above the castle on the screen. If you go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, scroll down to the bottom, you can pop your email address into our constant contact form. Just next to it, there's our Facebook page. Click to like it. Or you can follow us on Twitter, same place, and you will get news of our fabulous programmes every week. <laughs>